Okay, so now that I've taught you guys all the different controls of the combinator, I'm going to go ahead and insert this on a vocalist and uh, do a little bit of fun with this and kind of show you guys how I would implement this. Uh, now the first thing that I would be turning off is SBC because I'm wanting to control um, my independent bands individually rather than letting this control uh, the EQ. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off SBC. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and go to layer two and uh, press peak meter. And then now I'm gonna go ahead and start the music here. Um, and the reason I go to peak meter is because once we see the signal coming through here, we'll actually see what the signal level is on all these different bands here. And that way we can set our threshold um, off of those numbers. So let's go ahead and get this music going here. Okay, so we can already notice that this vocal is really bassy. So let's go ahead and mute the band and just get the vocal here. So we can see that everything's kind of happening in the negative 24, negative 26-ish area. So I'm gonna take my threshold down to that area. So we're gonna go ahead and plot this at like negative 28 here. And once we have that set, let's go ahead and unselect peak meter. And then you can actually see the amount of compression that's happening here, which is a lot. So let's go ahead and bring this back up here a little bit. Now, the band solo, when you're learning this effect, the band solo is awesome. So you can go ahead and go and select the different bands and actually listen to what they're doing. And so the low mid is really where we're going to be doing the main compression for this vocalist to really get that low end coming down. So. I'm going to go ahead and over exaggerate this, but we're just going to bring the band threshold down. Now one thing that we can also do is go up to our high mid, which is in this area, and take the band threshold and take it up, which is in essence boosting the higher end of the, mid, of the high mid band. We are actually boosting this up because we're taking the threshold above this. So now this threshold on our high mid is set at negative 22 and a half. So let's get the vocalist back in here. Okay, so I'm going to deactivate this and activate it and let you see the difference and hear the difference here. You showed me love. By leaving your throne, by bleeding and dying Huge on difference. the cross, that wonderful cross. Now we could change the microphone um, or do a little bit of EQ. Um, there's other things that we can do other than doing a multi-band compressor on a vocalist like this. Um, so this wouldn't be the initial um, thing that I would run to if I had a bassy vocal. I would probably try and change his microphone first um, rather than trying to fix something with effects. I would try and change the actual source first rather than doing this. But this is one great tool for that. Um, so the next thing that I want to show you is using this on um, as kind of a left-right bus insert um, and how we can kind of bring in a little bit of low end and a little bit of high end um, without gaining the amplitude up. Let's go ahead and bring the band back in. Okay, so one thing that we can do here is we can gain um, the bass up but bring the threshold down. So let's go ahead and do that first. So um, one thing that we want to do first is look at our peak meter and we can see that we're at negative 18 in here and so when we unselect peak meter we can see that a little bit of compression is happening already. So let's go ahead and go down into the low and we can solo this and listen to it. Okay so that's going to be the really low end that is going to be kind of hitting you in the chest. Uh, if you don't have good speakers, make sure you get some headphones to listen to this part. Um, so one thing that we're going to do here is we're going to take our band threshold and bring it down. So we're going to take this down to five, negative five. And then we're going to take our band gain and take this up to five. So what we're doing here is we are taking the gain of this low end and bringing it up, but also bringing our threshold for our compressor down. And that way we can have the compressor start compressing this low end, but still giving a boost here. So let's go ahead and see this here. So we're gonna take this down back to zero 
here. Just for the fun, I'm gonna way over exaggerate this. That's out, and here is his in. You can really hear the bass kind of coming through here. Okay, so I wouldn't do something that drastic. Probably be more in here. And then let's go ahead and do it to the high end just for kicks and giggles. So we're gonna gain it up and then bring the threshold down. Now, of course, that's way too much. That is a really quick tutorial on using this multiband compressor, um, the stereo combinator and the dual combinator of the X32. Um, now just one thing to make sure is that you are not running a channel through the combinator and bringing the uh, original out as well. Because of that delay that is applied by this, um, you'll get some pretty weird sounds coming out. And I'm gonna demonstrate that really quick. So I'm gonna unmute the bus, the original buses. Now, that's a really big difference. So that is one thing that you don't wanna have happen, is make sure that if you are using this effect, that you are running all of the, uh, whatever you're wanting to run through this and have the output of this going into your left, right bus or the output that you want it to go to. But make sure that you don't run, say, the drums through this, but also have it going in to another thing as like a parallel compression. Um, if you're wanting to do any parallel compression, make sure that you're doing it with the mix knob that's in the combinator. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial on the combinator. Now make sure you check out my website, dbbaudio.com, because in the blog there, I have a little bit more in-depth data on the combinator effect. And I actually do some smart analysis in there with transfer functions and RTAs that go through and show how this effect is actually working. Now, two things, make sure that you do check out that blog post because it's pretty awesome. And I have a whole lot of other information on the blog that you should check out as well. And then second of all, go ahead and subscribe to this channel and you can keep up to date on more tutorials that I'll be putting out with the X32 and some of the X Air products that Behringer has released as well. So if you have any questions, feel free to post below. Otherwise, thank you.